Hey, you just picked up the sled, congratulations. But if you don't have a garage, where are you gonna store it? That's the problem that I had. And for the last five or six years, I've been using these shelters to store the sleds. They've actually worked out okay, but they definitely come with some challenges. If you do have to store your toys outside, then things like moisture and critters are always gonna be a challenge. I've actually come up with a more permanent solution that I'll get to later in the video, but if you stick around, I'm gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of using a shelter like this one, and I'll give you some of the tips that I've come up with to deal with some of those challenges. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel at long last. My name is David Clark and this is my old sled. It is good to be back, guys. If you've been subscribed to the channel, thanks for sticking around. I've actually had a big project on the go and it meant that I couldn't get anywhere near my sleds or my tools for a while. I'll talk about that later. Now, if you haven't been a subscriber, but you like snowmobiles and you're looking for some tips and tricks, particularly if you're a new rider, take a second, hit that subscribe button, click the little bell icon, you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking primarily about these shelters that I store my sleds in. So these are a product from a company called Shelter Logics. They're temporary shelters. Some guys call them tarp tents. So it's basically like a vinyl, uh, cover that's stretched over a metal frame. And I do get a lot of questions about these things. And you know what? They're not a bad solution if you like me and you don't have a garage. Absolutely not the ideal way to store a sled. There's some definite pros and cons, and we're going to go through some of those. Now, the list of pros is a lot shorter than the list of cons, so I'm going to start with those. So first up on the pro side, they're a cheap solution, right? So if you've priced out building materials lately, they're crazy. Anyway, these things, they kind of vary. You can get these places like Canadian Tire, uh, Walmart. If, if you're in the States, I think Harbor Freight might have them. Um, pretty common. There's lots of different types of these around. These Shelter Logics ones I bought, I think the larger one was around 300 and the smaller one was around two. And they do give you a place out of the elements to do simple things like chain case oil changes and spark plug changes, things like that. Okay, the other thing that's kind of on the plus side, you can repair them. So they're a temporary shelter, but you can buy replacement panels for them for not too much money. <laughs> I know on my uh, the smaller one, I actually was uh, blowing snow and I had it a little bit too close to that door and it was windy and and the door wasn't secured so i actually ended up sucking the door up into the auger and the snowblower and had to buy a new door for it well that was stupid now if you buy a complete cover kit for one of these i think it's about 250 dollars canadian okay now let's talk about some of the negatives some of the challenges that i had using these shelters so the first one is snow load so as snowmobilers we're all just sitting around waiting for the snow but every time we had a decent amount of snow i'm out here clearing the snow off the roof of one of these because they'll only support so much before they collapse Usually I'll come in here and I'll push the snow off from the inside. The other thing I do sometimes is I'll use a roof rake. Just be really careful not to tear it. The other downside to these things is they are temporary, so they will wear out over time. The one tip that I can give you is if you can, try and put it up somewhere where it's going to be out of the elements as much as possible. So just as an example, the small one that I have on the other side of the house, I have that kind of up in the trees. It went about six years before I had to put a new cover on it. This one is kind of out on the front lawn. It gets a lot more wind. Wind is the real killer for these things. And it lasted like a year before it started showing some pretty serious wear. I think this one is just about done. I'm hoping it makes it through the winter. The other downside with these things is the open floor, right? So they don't have a floor. So I have a couple of problems and a couple of tips for you. So this one is kind of put up on a really sandy area. So the two problems I have there, the wind will blow in underneath and I end up getting dust on everything. So make sure that you've got a cover on the, the sled as well as being inside the shed. The other thing that happens here is I'm out riding, you get snow on the machine, it melts drips into the sand and the first season I learned really quick that that'll refreeze and my skis end up getting frozen into the sand and then I try to get out of here and I'm either stuck or I get a big clump of dirt. So the one tip I can give you, um, obviously use a stand on the back to get the track up off the ground and just put a couple pieces of wood under your skis. That just keeps them up out of the sand and they don't freeze. The other one, it's a really rocky area and it's really hard. The carbides will grab those rocks and that when I drive up into the shed. What I do there is I'll tend to blow a lot of snow into the shed at the beginning of the season and I'll make a nice pad on one side that I can drive the sled up onto. Okay, the other downside to these things and really anytime you're storing a sled outside is critters, right? So mice and squirrels, I get a lot of red squirrels up here. Um, they will make nests in your machine and that's a fire hazard. They will tear up insulation. So here's a chunk of the foam off my hood. They can chew wires, I've never had that happen, but critters are a pain in the butt. Now that's one of those situations where you just kind of do the best you can because you have like 
three to 36 mice in an acre and they have like a 20 day gestation period, they're little breeding machines. So you can put traps around the machine, but you know, unless you're coming out here and checking them every day, you're still gonna get mice getting to the machine. Poison, the same thing. I mean, you have poison little buggers, but they're just gonna keep reproducing and you're still gonna get them into the machine. The one thing you can try is mothballs. And some guys suggest these things. There's a couple of problem with these. Basically, the idea is that they turn into a vapor when they're exposed to air. That vapor stinks. Rodents don't like it. It keeps them away. And the problem is, uh, I don't like that stink either. Your, your sled is going to smell like your grandmother's underwear drawer. So you want to be careful how many of these things you pack into your machine. But the idea is you basically put a few of these in the bottom of the belly pan, maybe in the trunk, those kinds of things where the mice will go and it'll keep them away. So depending on what kind you buy, some mothballs are flammable. So you want to make sure that you get them all out of the sled before you ride it. Now, they're also not the kind of thing somebody would want to eat, but they are really toxic. So you do want to make sure that they're out of reach of curious pets. So I have tried them, kind of mixed results. I, I've almost always had some evidence of rodents around my machine. So either foam that's been chewed or uh, nesting material somewhere on the machine. Uh, the other thing that you can try is a bounce sheet, uh, these dryer sheets. Basically the same idea. They have a smell that the rodents, I guess, don't like. The upside, they don't stink as bad as the mothballs. Your machine will end up with a nice outdoor scent. But yeah, so some guys will swear by these. I've read other guys saying that, you know, the rodents just like it for nesting material. One thing I can tell you from personal experience, when we store our cushions from the lawn furniture in that for the winter, we do put dryer sheets in those bags and that actually is effective at keeping rodents away. Obviously, if you're a trail rider, then you may have things like granola bars or other food products that you keep on your sled. Just make sure, obviously, when you're storing your sled that you're getting rid of anything like that that can attract them. Ooh, Snickers. The other thing you can try if you have power, you might have to run an extension cord, but those little ultrasonic pest repellers that you can buy. So yeah, all I can tell you, I had two of those plugged in in my wooden shed, my little eight by 10 wooden shed, and they made no difference. I was always clearing uh, mouse and squirrel nests out of that shed as well. The other thing I've tried is a product called Critter Ritter. Uh, it's a powder that's it's all natural. It's made out of different types of pepper. It's basically an irritant that they don't want to cross. So if you could sprinkle that around your sled and inside a shed like this, it wouldn't get washed away like it does in gardens. That works okay. So really, if you're storing your sled outside, you're going to be fighting a losing battle against rodents. I mean, there's just so many red squirrels and mice up here that uh, you can't really make a dent in the population. Any little bit helps. So those are a couple of tips I can give you. If you've tried anything else and you've got a tip, post something in the comments. Moisture is always a challenge when you're storing a sled and even more so when you're storing it outdoors for a couple of reasons. So corrosion, for example, um, my main tip there is to spray any of the metal parts that are not aluminum, spray them down with something like, I use this XPS anti-corrosive lubricant. You can also get uh, rust check or even WD-40. Moisture can also get into your gas tank and obviously you don't want moisture in your fuel. So what I generally do before I store the sled, I'll fill the gas tank all the way and add a bit of stabilizer. That reduces the airspace at the top of the tank and there's less room for moisture to get in. Electricity is obviously another challenge when you have a shelter like this. All I do, I run an extension cord out and then I bought an LED fluorescent and I just use zip ties to secure it to the frame. So these things have done an okay job. They've given me a place to keep my stuff and a place to get out of the elements to, to work on them a little bit but they have been less than ideal for all of those reasons that we just talked about. So this year I decided to do something about it. We decided to bite the bullet and build a garage. Well, actually my contractor built it. So I didn't go with anything too huge. We kind of went with the space that we had available and within our budget because things are pretty expensive now. But uh, yeah, and no matter how big you go, you're going to end up filling it up. But I got enough room in here. I can get the ATV and a couple of sleds in pretty easily. Got a small workbench set up, starting to put some shelving in. Hopefully the electrical is going to go in later this week and then I got some better lighting in here. So hopefully I got a better spot to do some videos too. All right, so I'm pretty excited about having somewhere decent to store and work on my stuff. But you know what? If right now you are stuck storing your Stoneville outside, then I hope that video helped you out a little bit. If it did, take a second and mash that thumbs up button for me. So I think uh, with that, I'm going to call it a wrap for this video. So until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Um, where you put... <sighs> So just kind of to jump. I I know I had one. Actually, I had two of them in my little wooden. Oh.